Shalom, 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 Israel. This is uh, Captain Paul Israel from Kingdom Builders of Israel LLC, located in Tucker, Georgia. And today's class is going to be on the Baptist religion is not biblical. Uh, that's a good topic for today for us to discuss because uh, too many times our people think because they join a Baptist church religion, they are actually followers of the Messiah. But actually, we're going to do the history of it. We're going to see if the Baptist religion is biblical or not. And we're going to get somewhat of the history of the breakdown to prove that the Baptist religion and the other religions as well, but mainly primarily the Baptist religion is nowhere in the scriptures whatsoever. And um, we're going to start off in the book of uh, John chapter 1. Verse 29. We're going to start out in the book of uh, John, chapter 1, verse 29. This is in the New This is in the New Testament. Okay, so this is what we have to do. We have to let this Bible be true and every man a liar. So we're going to see if the Baptist religion is biblical. Okay, this is the book of uh, John, chapter 1, verse 29. It says, the next day, John seeth Yahshua coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the land of Elohim, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now, when it says, world, the sin of the world, it's talking about the world of Israel. That's what it's getting into. That's why he didn't say worlds, meaning uh, more than one world. He said world. That's singular. And we understand in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17, it was Israel is referred to uh, as being the world for salvation. See, this is history a lot of people don't understand. Let me get proof of that. Uh, this is the book of Isaiah. Chapter 45, verse 17, to prove that John, again, was just doing a requote, okay, just doing a requote, or was already mentioned. So this is on Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in Yahweh with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. You see that? Israel is the world without end that's granted salvation. Okay? So that's why John the Baptist was saying, hey, this is the land of Elohim which take away sin of the world. Because Israel is the world that was already prophesied for salvation according to Isaiah and also according to the other prophets as, as well. So we cannot play simple and think that now it's a whole new doctrine when we get to the New Testament format. Okay? So this is uh, the book of John chapter 1 verse 30. This is he of whom... I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I, I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. Here again, John the Baptist is saying the Messiah was supposed to come manifesting himself unto Israel. He did not say all nations, uh, everybody, he did not say none of that. He said strictly manifest himself to Israel. Okay, I can't make this stuff up. You know, uh, y'all really need to read the Bible, man. It's, it's, too long, it's too long for our people to be still asleep, still talking about everybody when his Bible is only talking about you, Israel, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Okay. Other than that, uh, keep going to verse 32. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit 
descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of Elohim. When it says baptized with the Holy, Holy Ghost, we know that's going into the laws according to the scriptures. According to what was already prophesied, uh, the prophets or what uh, was to take place. Okay, that's why I said the next verse, and I saw and bear record, bear record. Okay, he's bearing record of what was already mentioned by our forefathers based on what the Holy Scriptures already mentioned. Okay, that's what he's getting into. Not uh, Holy Spirit. The spirit, he see the spirit up in the sky descend, descend and fall upon him. It's not what that's talking about. This Bible is spoken in metaphors and allegories and similitudes at times. Okay, let's keep reading. And, and then, uh, this verse 34, it said, And I saw and bear record that this is the son of Elohim. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples. And looking upon Yahshua as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of Elohim. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Yahshua. You see that? They was uh, John the Baptist uh, members or people that followed his ministry were not called Baptists. They was called disciples. So that cuts right into... The Christianity doctrine of what? Oh, I'm a Baptist. If you talk to any person that's out there that goes into these establishments, they refer to themselves as Baptists. But here we read it out of the Bible that John the Baptist uh, followers never referred to themselves as Baptists. They referred to themselves as disciples. So that's the first lie that our people are into. Okay. So clearly we see in the Bible, nobody referred to themselves as Baptists. John the Baptist only referred to as Baptist because his ministry was on the water baptism, which uh, was the coming of the Son of Man. Okay, But then he said, my ministry is going to decrease, and the Son of Man, which is the Son of Elohim, which is Yahshua, his ministry is going to increase. He's going to wash you with what? The water. Meaning what? The Word. He's going to wash you and purify you with the Word of the Most High. By walking in his ways and example. So the Messiah was sent here to show us how to walk in righteousness. How to love one another. Okay. We need an example. And then we needed a, a, a sacrifice to be made to atone for the sins that we committed. So we can be worthy enough to be able to gain salvation. And be uh, to be righteous in the most eyes eyes. You know, even though our works will never be on that same level as the Mashiach, but at least we now aspire to be on the same level, uh, same, similar level playing field where we can work, work our own salvation. We can try to gain salvation. We can put in effort now versus at one point where we all fell short and now we felt like we didn't have a chance, but now we have a chance through Yahshua. Okay? Uh, we're going to get the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. We're going to get the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. So clearly we see in the New Testament, John the Baptist minister uh, members or followers would never refer to themselves as Baptists. But our people primarily say, I'm a Baptist. You know, I'm a Pentecostal and all these different terminology, which you would not see nowhere in the the scriptures. Okay. This is Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. It says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Yahshua. So it's not after Yahshua. It's not after the Messiah or the Messiah. It's not after his ways. It's not... Um, the tradition of man, these religions, is not after the Messiah. It's after 
whatever man that set up the organization. You follow his ways. You're not following this Bible ways. Um, and then let me get Romans chapter three, verse four. You know, this is how we're going to break the chains off our brothers and sisters mind because they think because I joined the Baptist church because it has the word Christian on there. I'm a Christian now. No. Okay. This is Romans chapter three, verse four. It says, Elohim forbid. Yeah. Let Elohim be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Okay? So you see that? You're supposed to be justified by thy sayings. The sayings are the commandments. Okay? So you might overcome. So he said, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So you can gain salvation by you keeping the sayings of this Bible. Keep the commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And these are his sayings. But under, under these religions, they say you're not under that no more. You're saved already. All you got to do is say the name or get baptized, dipped in water. And that's all you got to do. You know? But we got to uh, come back to what this Bible is actually saying. We can't follow Big Mama. We can't follow Uncle JJ. Uh, we can't follow Shanene. You know, we can't, we can't follow it. We got to follow what this Bible is saying, how to serve the Creator. He made it plain as day. Keep the commandments. Um, yeah, we're going to get uh, a little bit of the history of John Smith. Okay, we just proved to you that um, John Smith... You know, he's a so-called, you know, Edomite and John Smith religion is not biblical. We just proved that, that John the Baptist uh, ministry or his followers were never referred to as Baptists. So that's strike one on the Baptist religion. Okay. So the Baptist religion was started by John Smith. So he was born in 1554 and he, pa he passed away in 1612. So this is what he said. He said, John Smith was an early Baptist minister of England and a defender of the principle of religious liberty. So John the Baptist was not an Israelite. He was not a part of the Israelite understanding. So clearly he's going to be going off. And then also he started his ministry prior before the King James Version. So, yes, it was other Bibles around at that time but uh they had different translations around too but the most i put the spirit on king james who was a so-called black man because we ruled during the dark ages which is history that they don't teach in these school systems so but king james authorized the translation to be authorized uh in the best way possible for us to get understanding what we have today on who we are, what we need to do, because you're going to get a little bit of history why the most I put the spirit on King James to do what he did, because it was it could be confusing because you had different Bible versions of those times, which was confusing if um, if you wasn't all the way discerning in the truth and how they put the books together, how King James authorized the translations of the books to be organized in order so, that, so we can have the understanding in these last days. But uh, let me get the early life. It says early life of Smith. Smith is thought to have been the son of John Smith, a Yale man of Stewarton, Leo Steeple, Nottinghamshire. He was educated locally at the grammar school in Gainsborough and in Christ College, Cambridge, where he became a fellow in 1594. You know, where were the so-called blacks and Hispanics? And Native Americans, we was in dang slavery, okay. And we came, uh, the primary blacks came over here allegedly in 1619. That's what they tell us. Um, and, and change, and we was already slaves to the so called Africans and the Arabs do, during the uh, sub Saharan slave trade prior before the transatlantic slave trade. And then the natives, they was already conquered in 1492. Uh, 
and also possibly also 1450s as well during the Renaissance period and different portions of those times, but primarily overcome completely in 1492. Okay, and also uh, during the process of time, uh, the so-called white man conquered different areas in the states and in, in, in South America with the French and so forth, the Portuguese and so forth. But other than that, in Spaniards as well too. So it which uh, forced us to be in these uh, damn religions. So it says Smith was ordained as an Anglican priest in 1594 in England. He preached in the city of Lincoln in 1600 to 1602. Soon after his ordination, he broke with the Church of England and left for Holland, where he and his small congregation began to uh, began to study the Bible alternately. He briefly returned to England. So this is prior before the King James Version came out. In 1609, Smith, along with a group in Holland, came to believe in believers' baptism thereby rejecting infant baptism and they came together to form one of the earliest Baptist churches. Baptists generally believe that baptism is a sign of obedience to Elohim. Baptists also believe that baptism by Im immersion is puritorically symbolic of cleansing from sin and spiritual regeneration. Likewise, they believe that baptism does not save one from sin, but is a believer's identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua and Mashiach. Okay, it says, now this is the key point I wanted to make. It said, in the beginning, Smith was closely aligned with his Anglican heritage as time passed. His views evolved. Smith's education at Cambridge included the trivium and quadrivium, which included an emphasis upon Aristotelian logic and metaphysics. So he got a little Scientology into that thing, I guess, or a lot of physics or whatever. Smith's involving essayology was due to his applying biblical truth about the truth into numerous logical syllogisms. He was utterly convinced that believers' baptism and a free church gathered by covenant were fund fundamental to the church. First, now this is the key. First, Smith insisted that true worship was from the heart and that any form of reading from a book and worship was an invention of sinful men. So, John Smith was against any form of of reading the book, I mean reading this Bible to get proper understanding. So he was all about the heart. So that's why uh, the Christians today they focus, man. Oh, it's all about the heart. It ain't about what's in that book. It's about the heart because John Smith uh, believed that. So whatever John Smith, the leader of the organization, organization believed, your followers are going to regurgitate the same thing. That's why you hear the same thing over and over and over again. Oh, it's your heart. It's your heart. It's her heart. Because John Smith, the founder of Baptist religion and Christianity, he didn't believe that you're supposed to follow a book, basically. He said this rejection of liturgy remains strong among Baptists still today because the people of the Baptist religion don't follow this book. They refuse to follow this Bible. No matter you show them everything in this book, they're not going to follow it. But this is what they rather do. Prayer, singing, and preaching had to be completely spontaneous, meaning they was doing the things that you see in the church, hooping and hollering, singing songs, um, doing the same thing like you see on TV. This is why it's fun, the fundamental with the singing, praying, and foaming out the mouth, prancing on the ground, talking about you got the Holy Spirit, but they don't want to follow the book. They was, uh, The founder was against it. He was against reading the Bible like that. And then uh, let's go to, he went so far. Now, this is Smith. John Smith went so far with his ideology that he would not allow, he would not allow the reading of the Bible during worship on the grounds that a translation was the work of a man's wit and therefore not to be brought into the worship of Elohim to be read. This idea Going from the belief that worship should be ordered by the Spirit. <laughs> you see that? This is why your Christian pastors 
don't read the Bible like that. They are against this because they found their John Smith was against people reading the Bible and he would not allow that to take place. So this is why a lot of times um, Big Mama, your granddaddy, your dad, they Bible, they don't even really read their Bible like that. That Bible be the Bible uh their Bible be on their shelf collecting dust. Because they found her, John Smith, who's a so-called white man, right, who's Esau, Edomite, taught them, hey, don't read that book. That's why they only do praying, singing, and uh, and and or well, so-called praying, singing and preaching. You know, hooping and hollering and all that, foaming out the mouth. And they know certain uh, verses to read, and that's it. They only read John 3, 16, certain verses, and that's it. Close the book. But you can't tell grandma that. She going to want to fight you. <laughs> you can't. You said, not, not my God, not my Jesus. She going she gonna to slap you, call you the devil, call you all type of names. But you bringing out the history that our people, they don't want to recognize this thing. This thing is, is ridiculous, man. How you going to gain knowledge? You don't read the Bible, you know? So this stuff he was coming out with was probably before the King James Version. Okay, and then it says, before his death, this is at the end of his life. Before his death, Smith regretted the fact that he baptized himself and wrote a letter of apology due to some shared views, including Christology. He began to reproach with the Mennonite church. This resulted in his ex excommunication from the church by Thomas Hughes. Smith and part of the church joined a Mennonite church while Hughes and another part of the church returned to England to form the first permanent Baptist church in 1611. Co coincidentally, this was also the same year that the King James Version of the Bible was first published. You see that? So, so the Bible, the King James Version Bible has nothing to do with the Baptist religion because we just read earlier that uh, that the Baptist religion started by John Smith came about earlier than uh, like around six like sixteen hundreds or like late fifteen hundreds like fifteen ninety four so forth. So it, the, our book that we carry the Hebrew Israelites carry has nothing to do with um john smith has nothing to do with these churches that's what our people don't understand they're trying to associate the king james version bible the holy bible that we have now as association with these religions which it doesn't and not saying that some of the books that it had didn't have some truth but again to have the total complete understanding that we have today had to be broken down how we have it today in the king james version bible uh i'm gonna get the history on that why king james had to get that, why the most I put the spirit on King James to get the book authorized. Okay, it says, uh, this is University of Glasgow. It says, other English Bibles before the King James Bible. You had the Great Bible, the Bishop's Bible, and the Ramaz Durabai Bible. So, as you can see, you had other Bibles. It said, uh, 1500 to 1555, the most advanced at the time, relying on improved editions, uh, Erasmus, the Greek New Testament, and Munster's Hebrew, Latin Old Testament. The Great Bible was initially printed in Paris, but after sabotaged by French Catholic censors, it had to be reprinted in London. From 1568 until the printing of the King James Bible in 1611, the Bishop Bible was effectively the official version of the Church of England. So this is probably most likely the Bible that uh, uh, John Smith was possibly reading from, the Bishop's Bible. But the overall, and also they had, it was, uh, they say a conglomerate work of 16 English and Welsh clergymen. It was a revision of the Great Bible, but with the recent Geneva Bible also in mind. So he probably could have read... From the Geneva Bible, I'm talking about John Smith, probably read from the Geneva Bible, or also possibly the Bishop Bible or the Great Bible. It didn't uh, specify which Bible he was uh, reading from, but that's normally now you see why the most had to put spirit on King James because you had a lot of confusion going on at this time with different Bibles being displayed as far as the order and the translation is concerned. 
so it made perfect sense why the most high from spirit King James to get the book translated so the uh the saints of the most high who the Israelites can gain the understanding what is needed to come back to, and um serve him. Yeah, that's for the most high is all about order anyway. Because that right there is just confusion. Because you'd be like, hey, what what Bible are we supposed to read? Or whatever. But eventually King James Bible became the uh authoritative Bible, you know, at that time, you know, in the sixteen hundreds. Okay. But other than that, that's just a a, a brief history history of uh John Smith. Um we have to know that hey, John Smith, you know, he's not an Israelite, you know, so he's trying to get a breakdown of this Bible, you know, when he's not a part of the the ministry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so his ministry is gonna be off because again, we just read it was the disciples, and we know that the disciples were Israelites, and we read what John says, the, the Messiah must be manifest amongst Israel. It didn't say everybody. Um, so other than that, this concludes the lesson on um, the Baptist religion is not biblical. And this is just a discussion that needed to be brought out because uh, many of our people are confused on if they're serving the one true Elohim or not. But that's to answer your question. You're serving John Smith. <laughs> You're not serving the Most High and, and 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 His Son. You're not serving Him. You're serving yourself and you're serving your tradition that was taught to us by slave owners. Okay, and right here we have a um, picture in South Carolina of us as a people learning about the Baptist religion in slavery days. This is an actual picture that somebody took. From the Rockville Plantation Negro Church in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, you got the white Jesus on the cross. You got the cross right here. And then you got our own brother teaching this to our people. 